from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Hi, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover 2020, the virtual experience. I'm your host, Stu Miniman. I'm really happy to be joined on the program. Two of our CUBE alumni, we have the Daves from Hewlett Packard Labs. Uh, sitting in the screen next to me is Dave Husak. He's a fellow and general manager for the Cloudless Initiative. And on the other side of the screen, we have Dave Larson, Vice President and CTO of the Cloudless In Initiative. Dave and Dave, thank you so much for joining us again. Delighted to be here. All right, so specifically, we're going to talk, be talking a bit about uh, security. Obviously, you know, very important in the cloud era and as we build cloud native architectures. Uh, you know, Dave Husak, I guess, what, what, why don't you set the stage for us a little bit of, you know, where security fits into, you know, HPE overall and, uh, you know, the, the mission that, you know, last year a lot of buzz and discussion and interest around cloudless. So just put that as a start and then we'll uh, get into a lot of discussion about security. Right, yeah, last year we did, um, you know, launch the initiative and, uh, you know, we framed it as, um, it, it composed of three components, one of which, the, in fact, probably the most uh, important aspect of which was the trust fabric, the cloudless trust fabric, which was, you know, built on the idea of intrinsic security for all workload endpoints, right? And this is a theme that you see playing out, you know, a year later, playing out, I think, across the industry, right? Um, you hear that, language and that, the, you know, that kind of idea being promoted in the context of uh, zero trust, um, uh, you know, new capabilities being launched by, by VMware and, and other kind of runtime environments, right? And, you know, the way I like to say it is that we have entered an era, an era of, of security first in IT infrastructure. It's, it's no longer going to be practical to um, build IT infrastructure and then, you know, uh, have products that secure it, right? You know, build perimeters, do micro segment or anything like that. Um, workload endpoints need to be intrinsically secure. And, um, you know, the, the upshot of that really at this point is that all IT infrastructure companies are security companies now. Whether you know it, acknowledge it, like it or not, uh, we're all uh, security companies now. And so, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, principles that are applying in the cloudless trust fabric are those zero trust principles, are based on cryptographic workload identity, leverage unique aspects of HP's uh, products and infrastructure that we've already been delivering with hardware and silicon root of trust built into our ProLiant servers and other capabilities like that. And you know, our mission, you know, my mission is uh, to propel that forward and ensure that HP is you know, at the forefront of, of securing everything. Uh, excellent, definitely, you know, love the security first discussion. Uh, you know, every company we talk to, absolutely, security is not only a C-level, but, you know, typically a board level uh, discussion. Um, I, I, I guess my, my initial feedback is you say, if every company today is a security company, many of them, you know, might not be living up to uh, their expectations just yet. Uh, so, uh, Dave, Dave Larson, let, let's say, you know, applications are, you know, at the core of what we look at in cloud native. Um, it's new architectures, new design principles. Uh, so give us some, some, what is HPE's thoughts as to how security fits into that and, and what's different from uh, how we might've thought about security in the past in applications. Well, I think Dave touched on it, right? Uh, from a trust fabric perspective, we have to think of moving to something where the end points themselves, whether they're workloads or services are actually intrinsically secure and that we can instantiate some kind of a zero trust framework that really benefits the applications. It really isn't sufficient to do intermediate inspection. In fact, the real primary reason why that's no longer possible is that the world is moving to encryption everywhere. And as soon as all packets are encrypted in flight, uh, notwithstanding claims to the contrary, it's virtually impossible to do any kind of inference on the flows to, to apply any meaningful security. Uh, but the way we see it is that uh, the transition is moving to a modality where all services, all workloads, all endpoints can be mutually attested, cryptographically identified in a way that allows a zero trust model to emerge so that all endpoints can know what they are speaking to on the remote end and by authorization principles, determine whether or not they're allowed to speak to those. 
So from a HPE perspective, the area where we build is from the bottom up. We have a silicon root of trust in our server platform as part of our ILO 5 um, integrated lights out baseboard management controller. We can actually deliver a uh, discrete and measurable identity for the hardware and project it up into the workload into the software realms. Excellent. So I, I heard you mention identity uh, makes me think of uh, the, the Cytale acquisition uh, mm -hmm. that the HPE made earlier this year. Uh, people in the cloud native uh, community, uh, if you've been to KubeCon, uh, you know, Spiffy, of course, is a, is a project that had gotten quite a bit of attention. Uh, give us a little bit as to you know, how, how that acquisition fits into this overall discussion we were just having. Oh yeah, uh, so we, we uh, um, acquired Cytale into the Cloudless Initiative um, beginning of this year. Um, as, you, as you understand, uh, Stu, right? Uh, identity, cryptographic identity is fundamental to zero trust security because we're no longer, like Dave pointed out, we're no longer relying on, on intermediary devices, firewalls, or other kinds of functions to, to um, manage, you know, authorize and uh, those communications. So the idea of building cryptographic identity into all workload endpoints, devices, and data is sort of uh, a cornerstone of any zero trust security strategy. Um, we were delighted to bring the team on board, um, not only from the standpoint that they are the, the world's experts, original contributors and, and uh, moderators and committers uh, in, you know, in the stewardship of Spiffy and Spire, the two projects in the CNCF, um, but uh, you know, the impact they're going to have on uh, the, the HP's product development, hardware and software uh, is going to be outsized. Um, and it also, you know, as a, um, I'll have to point this out as well. You know, it is the, this is the, the most prominent uh, open source project that HP is now, you know, stewarding, right? In terms of its, its acceptance, uh, uh, Spiffy and Spire are both poised to be, uh, We'll have an announcement here shortly, probably, but we expect they're going to be promoted to the incubating phase of, of CNCF maturity from the sandbox. It's actually the, the, one of the first sandbox projects in the CNCF, and so it's going to join that pantheon of you know, the, the, the you know, top few dozen out of, I think, 1,390 projects in the CNCF. So like you, like you pointed out, Stu, um, you know, Spiffy and Spire are right now you know the world's leading candidate as you know sort of the, the 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 certificate standard for cryptographic workload endpoint identity and we're looking at that as a, a, a you know a very fundamental enabling technology for this transformation that the industry is going to go through yeah it, it's really interesting if we pull on that open source thread a little bit more uh you know i think back to earlier in my career you know 15 20 years ago and if you talk to a cio you know security might be important to them but they keep what they're building and how their IT infrastructure is, is something that, that they keep very understood. And right. if you were a vendor supplying to them, you had to be under NDA to understand because that was a differentiation. Now we're talking about leveraging cloud, we're talking about open source. You know, even when I talk to the financial institutions, they're all talking amongst themselves to how do we share best practices because it's not, am I secure? It's we all need to be more secure. So, I no, wonder if you can comment a little bit on, on that trend and, you know, how the role of open source. Yeah, this is, this is um, you know, an, an extension of Kirchhoff's principle, right? The idea that security, a, a security system has to be secure even if you know the system, right? That it, it's only the, the, the contents of the keys and the communication that are, that, uh, are important. And that is playing out at the, at the highest level in our industry now, right? So, um, it is, you know, a, like I said, a, you know, I, you know, cryptographic identity and and identity based encryption are the cornerstones of of building a zero trust fabric. Um, you know, one of the other things is because you mentioned that uh, that we also observe is that the CNCF, the Apache Foundation. Um, the other thing that's I think a contrast to 15 years ago, right? Back 15, 20 years ago, open source was a software development phenomenon, right? Where you know, the, the, the usual idea, you know, there's repositories of code, you pull them down, you modify them for your own particular purposes and you upstream this, the changes and such, right? Um, it's less about that now. It is much more a, a model for open source operations than it is a model for open source development. Most of the people that are pulling down those repositories are mostly using them. They're not modifying them. 
right? And as you as you also, I think, understand, right? The framework of the CNCF landscape is comprehensive, right? You can build an entire IT infrastructure operations environment by, you know, picking storage technology, security technologies, uh, monitoring, management. You know, it's 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 complete, right? And it is, you know, becoming really, you know, a major operational discipline out there in the world to harness all of that development, harness the 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 open source communities. Uh, not only in the software, not only in the security space, but I think you know comprehensively, and and that um, engine of growth and development is is I think you know probably the largest uh, you know manpower and brain power and 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 uh, uh, you know operational kind of uh, active daily users model out there now, right? And and it's it's going to be critical I think through the decade this decade that's coming um, that uh, successful IT infrastructure companies have to be very tightly engaged with those communities in that in that process because open source operations is is the new thing it's like you know devops became ops dev or something like that is 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 the is the is the trend yeah and i'm glad you brought that up you know i think about the devops movement really fused you know security it can't be a bolt on it can't be an afterthought mm -hmm. Uh, the mantra I've heard the last few years is security is everyone's responsibility. Uh, Dave Larson, you know, the, what, what question I have for you is, now how do we make sure, uh, you know, policy is enforced? You know, <laughs> even I think about an organization, if everyone's responsible uh, for it, you know, who's actually making sure that things happen? Because, you know, if everybody's looking after it, it should be okay. But, you know, br bring us in a little bit uh, from the application standpoint. Well, I would say, you know, first of all, you have to narrow the problem down, right? Uh, the more we try to centralize security with discrete appliances at some kind of a choke point, the explosion, the combinatorial explosion of policy um, uh, de declaratives that are necessary in order to achieve that problem, or to achieve the solution, uh, becomes untenable, right? Uh, there is no way to achieve the right kind of policy enforcement unless we get as close to the actual workloads themselves, unless we implement a zero trust model where only known and authorized endpoints are allowed to communicate with each other. You know, we've, we've lived with uh, a really unfortunate situation in the internet at large for the last couple of decades where an IP address is both a location and an identifier. Uh, this is a problem because that can be abused. It's, it's something that can be changed. It's something that is easily spoofed. And frankly, the nature of that uh, element of the way we connect applications together is the way that almost virtually all exploits get into, into the environment and cause problems. If we move to a zero trust model where the individual endpoints will only speak with, only respond to something that is authorized and only things that are authorized, and they trust nothing else, we eliminate 95 to 99% of the problem and we are in, in an automated stance that will allow us to have much better assurance of the security of the connections between the various endpoints and services. Excellent, so you know, one of the questions that always comes up, uh, you, some of the pieces we're talking about here are open source. You talk about security and trust across multiple environments. Uh, how does HPE differentiate from uh, you know, everything else out there and, you know, how are you taking the leadership position? I'd uh, lo love to hear both of your uh, commentary on that. Yeah, well, like I said, initially, uh, the real differentiation for us is that HPE was the market leader for industry standard servers from a security perspective. Three years ago in our uh, ProLiant Gen 10 servers, when we announced them, they had the silicon root of trust and we've shipped more than a million and a half servers into the market with this capability that is unique in the market. And we've been actively extending that capability so that we can project the identity, not just to the actual hardware itself, but that we can bind it in a multi-factor sense to the individual software components that are hosted on that server, whether it's the operating system, a hypervisor, a VM, a container framework, or an actual container or a piece of code from a serverless perspective. All of those things need to be able to be identified and we can bring a multi-factor identity capability to individual workloads that can be the underpinning for this zero trust connection capability. Great, and, and, and Dave, anything you'd like to add there? 
Um, no, what he said, I think HP is uniquely positioned. The, you know, the, the depth and the breadth of our installed base of platforms that are already zero trust ready, if you will, right? Uh, coupled with the, the identity technology that we're developing in the context of the Sightail acquisition, um, and Dave and my my work in uh, building the cloudless trust fabric, you know, um, are the are the like I said the cornerstones of the of, of these architectures, right? Um, and HP has uh, a couple of unfair advantages here that you know the breadth and depth of our of our customer base and the, the installed base of the systems we're already put out there. So um, while the world is transitioning, you know, inevitably to these, uh, you know, these kinds of security architectures, these kinds of IT infrastructure architectures, um, HP has a, um, you know, a, a leadership position by default here that, that we can take advantage of um, and our customers can reap the benefits of uh, without, uh, you know, being without build, you know, rebuilding, forklift upgrading or otherwise, you know, it's, it is, um, as Dave talked about, you know, uh, a lot will change, right? There's more to do, right? Uh, it, as we move from, you know, IP addresses and port numbers as identities for security, because we know that perimeter security, network security like that is busted, right? It is, it's, you know, every headline making, you know, kind of advanced persistent threat kind of vulnerabilities, it's all at the root of all those problems, right? There are technologies like OPA, right? You know, policy has to be reframed in the context of workload identity, not in network identity. You know, I, I call this, you know, sort of the micro-segmentation fallacy, right? You, you know that, that um, uh, you know, perimeters are broken, not a, not, a, not a valid security strategy anymore. So the answer can't be, let's just draw smaller perimeters, especially since we're now filling them up with ever more, you know, dynamic evanescent kind of workload endpoints, you know, containers coming and going at a certain pace and serverless instances, right? All of those things springing up and, and, and being torn down, you know, on, you know, very short, you know, life cycles, right? It is inconceivable that traditional, uh, you know, uh, perimeter-based, micro-segmentation-based security frameworks can keep up with the combinatorial explosion and the pace of that with which we are gonna be, um, where you know orchestration frameworks are going to be deploying these endpoints so um there are you know, there's a lot more to do you know but this is this is the transformation store this is of the, of the 2020s uh, you know infrastructure it infrastructure is going to look very different in two five ten years from now than it does today and and you know that's you know we believe hp um has, like I said, a, a few unfair advantages to lead the world uh, in, in terms of those transformations. Excellent, well, appreciate the look towards the future as well as where we are today. Dave and Dave, thanks so much for joining. Thank you, Stu. Thanks, Stu, pleasure. All right, we'll be back with lots more coverage. HPE Discover 2020, the virtual experience. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.